Today we are going to talk about these topics. Number 1. How to be a match for what you desire. Number 2. Create resistance or creative acceptance. Number 3. What good is a rocket that fizzles? Number 4. Buying the myth. Number 5. What's the opposite of doubt? Number 6. Feeling hopeless. Number 1. The law of attraction is a very sensitive and tricky law to put into practice. When you don't understand how it works it can be quite a struggle to what you deeply want. However when you understand that everything about the law of attraction starts with yourself first then the rewards can be outstanding. Wanting is not the only thing it takes for you to have. Your wanting can actually repel the things you want from coming to you. So how do you become a match for the things you want without repelling them? How do you feel? Your feelings are a very great indication of what you will attract. How often do you have thoughts about the things you deeply want but also felt scared about actually having those things? Maybe you may have felt scared and worried about the possibility of not being able to get what you desired. Those feelings of fear, actually repels what you want away from you. You lose your magnetic power when you feel fearful or worried or even needy. Fearful feelings can only mean that you are not a match, because when you are truly a match for what you want, you feel that it is already yours because you understand the deeper aspect of how the universe works and you are in a state of knowledge, trust and faith. Lack of knowledge breeds fear, worry and doubt, all of which actually kills your chances of attracting what you deeply desire. To be a match for what you want you must feel that it is already yours. You must feel good about it, you must feel deserving of it. Those who are wealthy and successful with the law of attraction dive deeply into the knowledge and study deeply all aspects of it until they master it. The more knowledge you have of how the laws of attraction work the better able you become at making it work. The more you are in contact with the teachings of the universal laws the more confident you become in learning how they work, why they work and when they work. Positive and negative thoughts alone do not make you a master of the laws of attraction. Number 2. Resistance is not a new word, but for many of us awareness of resistance is new. In Webster's Collegiate Dictionary, resistance is defined, to withstand, to strive against, to exert force in opposition, to counteract, defeat or frustrate. Resistance is useful if there is a flu or virus around. If your body's immune system is working as it should, you'll have good resistance to disease, you'll stay healthy. Resistance to the temptation to do something that goes against your core values will strengthen you, while giving in to that temptation will weaken your character. Resistance can be an indicator that something isn't quite right for you, at this time. It's good to notice resistance and to ask yourself, why am I experiencing this resistance? There's another side to resistance. The other side of resistance destroys the very thing that we desire. This resistance arises from a dislike for change. Humans are sort of strange in that we offer a desire to the universe, and then we resist the very changes this desire sets in motion. For example, when I offered my desire to become financially independent, I didn't realize that the answer would come in the shape of loss of income from my former spouse. But it did. When I asked for financial independence I had a different scenario in mind that went something like this, my business income will increase steadily until it reaches a certain amount, then the spousal support can decrease. The universe responded to my desire, just not as I had expected, and I resisted the change. The universe knew that in order to become independent I had to first be independent. I wanted the security of spousal income, but that emotional dependence on an outside source was holding me back from independence. I find it easier to accept change when I have initiated it. When someone else initiates change that affects me, my first reaction is to resist. However, the law of attraction teaches that everything that touches my life is the result of some vibration in me. It may be a vibration I don't like. It may be a subtle vibration I pay little attention to. It may be a vibration that has gone underground, like anger or hurt that I did not acknowledge at the time I first experienced it. Emotions are energy in motion. When we try to suppress an emotion it does not go away, it goes into our subconscious mind where it silently sabotages our life by setting up resistance which invites more negative experiences and creates tension between people who used to enjoy each other. The greatest disintegrating element in the human consciousness is resistance. Charles Fillmore, The Revealing Word, 1931 Resistance doesn't just put on the brakes to receiving our desires, resistance disintegrates. It separates. It decomposes. It fragments our true self. We lose our sense of wholeness. We feel disconnected from source. 
This disconnection begins to show up in how we feel about ourselves and how we relate to others. Soon, we are quarreling with our best friend and blaming them for the situation. Sound familiar? What can we do about resistance? Is there an alternative? Should we resist resistance? That doesn't work. If we notice resistance and try to suppress it or resist it, we create more. The alternative is acceptance. Not resignation, but creative acceptance. I teach the history of the law of attraction and it's interesting to note that in the Middle Ages there was a great persecution of anyone who held a philosophical belief that differed from that defined by political and religious authorities. People who understood the law of attraction, those individuals who maintained their personal power through controlling their thoughts and emotions, were faced with a serious choice, either resist the powers that be and die, comply with the demands of the aggressors, and deny themselves, or be creative. In that case, many practitioners of metaphic simply moved to Arabia where they found freedom to live their beliefs in an integral way. Change is bound to happen. People are going to make choices which affect our lives. We are going to make choices which have an effect on others. Charles Handy said, change is the only constant. How we handle change, invited or uninvited, will affect our vibration and in turn, our quality of life. Take a few moments to notice resistance in your body, mind or emotions. What does it feel like? Restriction? Tightness? Blockage? Frustration? Confusion? Judgment? Indignation? Yes, all those feelings are the evidence of resistance. When I'm noticing resistance, I ask my higher self for understanding and a creative acceptance. My prayer will be something like this. Please show me the root of my resistance and at the same time, give me an idea of how to creatively accept this situation. The bottom line is, change is going to happen. I'm either going to create resistance or acceptance. One's choice contributes to the disintegration of my character and the other strengthens my sense of wholeness. It's my choice. Number 3 Muriel used to feel passionately about starting a business, but somewhere between grading tests and completing report cards she lost her enthusiasm. For as long as she could remember Muriel, my coaching client, had secretly nurtured a dream to own her own business. But like many women in her age group, she had chosen a safer, more socially acceptable, occupation. She was a teacher. Now that she was close to retirement, she was beginning to realize that it might soon be possible to fulfill that hidden dream and start a new career. This time she would do something that would allow her to utilize many of her gifts and talents. She would own a business. With this rediscovered dream came strong feelings of desire and hope powerful emotions called rockets of desire. Like Muriel, Many of us are afraid that if we don't maintain that emotional high we won't get our heart's desire. What we fail to realize is that the initial rocket of desire is only a rocket. It takes off fast and rises quickly with a flaming burst of delight. Then it descends back to earth leaving us with the memory of its brief journey and fueling our desire to ascend again. It is this memory that motivates and sustains us to find a way to actualize the rocket of desire. Once we have tasted the thrill of owning a business, a new automobile, a new home or vacation, once we have felt the rush of excitement and delight in our imagination, then we begin to move toward that desire. The secret of getting your heart's desire is to keep your attention on what you want on that idea or goal which caused the rocket of desire. What happens to many of us is that after the rocket has returned to earth, we begin to observe reality, the way things are now. We focus on reasons why we don't have and probably can't have the desired outcome and effectively put the brakes on our rocket of desire. Unless we can look beyond what is present today and picture ourselves as we want to be, we may never attain the level of belief necessary to receive the rocket of desire as our new reality. Muriel had come to our coaching session focused on her lack of passion. She was so worried about her waning emotions that she was not paying attention to what had shown up for her that week, a potential business partner. However, once Muriel saw this little graph and understood where she was in the process she was able to recognize the significance of meeting her potential business partner and to continue the work necessary to realize her dream. Just like Muriel, we can get the most from our rocket of desire by recognizing it for what it is, the exhilarating emotion necessary for creating a memory that sustains our hope until the rocket of desire becomes our reality. Number 4. So much life conditioning inhibits the brilliance that is in you. Are you accessing all that is available to you? 
as a brilliant coach, as a brilliant human being, as a brilliant spiritual being, as a bright light in the world, you have access to so much abundance. Are you living it? Are you breathing it? Do you believe it in every fiber of your being? Or are you buying into the myth, the illusions? There are so many things aimed at people to help them build their lives and businesses. As though they are not enough themselves. As though the magic and mystery of existence were there to thwart your success. It's so far from the truth of the abundance available in the universe. It often shocks and surprises me to see this disturbing trend. Whatever the truths are, I'm here to say there is more. Dismantle the illusions of safety, security, structures, that create a prison of expectation, necessity, and image. Get into the risk of playing in the mud, getting dirty, letting go and letting God, magic, source, energy. You had it happening once as a kid. Bring it alive again. Inside, you are yearning for it. Get excited again about the adventure, this life. Get curious and playful with your day-to-day, -day, with your business, with your home, relationships, and finances. If you resist and prefer safety, security, and rigidity, I'm curious, so how's that working for you? Where are you still dissatisfied? What don't you want to let go of? What's it costing you? These thoughts, while universal, really are inspired by the tragic scarcity demonstrated in the world. Obviously it doesn't affect everyone, but we do see some living in scarcity. This is a boost to those that do need it and a reminder to those of us who get it but are still human in our experience. Number 5 The Law of Attraction teaches us that whatever you focus on, you will attract more of into your life, whether it's wanted or unwanted. To deliberately attract more of what you enjoy, you need to only three things, be very clear about what you want, write it down, find the precise words that describe your desire. Become a vibrational match for what you want, speak only in the most positive way about your desire and remember the three phrases that will raise your vibration faster, I am in the process of attracting. The universe is in the process of lining everything up so I can attract. I love it when. Allow the law of attraction to deliver. Just eliminate doubt and receive what you've asked for. What we're not told, is how to eliminate doubt. Better yet, what's the opposite of doubt? Certainty. Say that word out loud. C-E-R-T-I-N-T-Y. How does it feel to have certainty? Can you recall a time when you had certainty? What did certainty look like or feel like? Do you remember arriving at a state of knowing that what you desired would be yours? Do you recall thinking or saying, I know it doesn't look that way right now, but I just know this is going to happen? That's certainty. The good news is that the law of attraction doesn't wait for you to have complete certainty before it starts delivering what you want. It is waiting for you to have a little more belief than doubt, just 51% more belief for your desire will get things started. Once you allow yourself to believe that it is possible to have your desire, that if it's possible for someone else to have this, then it is possible for me to have it too. Once you have tipped the scale so that your desire outweighs doubt, you'll begin to notice signpost events that prove your desire is getting closer and closer. Do you recognize signposts? A close match is a signpost. So is a taster experience such as this one. I've had a dream for my company. Teleclass International Services Inc., to bring the Teleclass model into corporations. The first signpost that this dream would be realized was a small contract we had with IBM to train 15 of their trainers. At the time, I thought my dream was in full production, however the next contract for corporate teleleader training arrived two years later. In the meantime, we attracted the perfect person to deliver the corporate training and we've had adequate time to train her in all aspects of this industry. Recently, the corporate contracts have been flowing in at a steady rate as more corporations learn about teleclasses and how this model can reduce their training costs. Now my dream is being fulfilled. As you pay attention to those signposts, acknowledge them for the encouragement that they are intended to be and celebrate that you are one more step closer, your belief will grow into certainty. Notice how much closer you are today, to being certain that a long-held dream will one day become true. Make certainty your goal, and the law of attraction may surprise you with an early gift. Number 6 Letter I don't know why I'm writing this, it's so unlike me to actually feel hopeless. I am a single mom raising two teenaged boys. After my youngest was assaulted on the way to school last year, I quit a decent job in television to start my own marketing PR business out of my home. I had two clients that, 
at the time, which enabled me to make more than I had working for the TV station. And then in March, one of the clients and I parted ways. We had very different expectations. Ultimately, we each had contrasting views over what my role would be. That cut my income in half. I have attracted one new client, but at a third of what my former client paid. And now, I'm in debt. And now, I'm in debt, my account is overdrawn, because my other significant client got behind and didn't put in my automatic payment into my account until yesterday, and it takes 24-72 hours for it to show up. They had told me it was going to be put in last Thursday. My ex's child support is late and I don't even have enough money to pay for groceries until the money shows up. I'm terrified the checks will bounce and I'll be left with nothing. I can't sleep. My stomach is in knots I almost feel as if my kids would be better off with their dad. He's very well off and could afford to give them everything I can't. I don't know how to get out of this poverty mentality. I don't know why I have such feelings of lack when it comes to my finances. Tomorrow I have a meeting with a potential client and I can't even focus on putting together a presentation for him. It's as if I already know that he won't want to work with me, let alone pay me. I get so up for things, I have such great expectations and then everything falls flat. In all other areas of my life, I'm doing well. My kids are terrific, good hearts, straight students, excellent athletes. I don't have weight issues. I don't have problems with my relationships with the opposite sex. It's just that money seems to be slipping out of my grasp. Quite honestly, I do believe that money buys a fair amount of happiness. At least for me, knowing what I've gone through these past years, it would buy some peace of mind. And that's what I want. Freedom and peace of mind. To go where I want. To do what I want. To feel how I want to feel. Can you help me get out of this negative spiral? A reader Rebecca's reply, Dear reader, thanks so much for writing. And I hope you are feeling better. Yep. I've been there a few times. I can remember days when all I could do was walk around the house saying, I just want to feel good over and over. Eventually, I did start to feel better. Now, feeling good is my dominant feeling. Actually, you are an excellent attractor. Look at what you are telling yourself about money and then notice how you are attracting more of the same. If I were coaching you, I would ask you to take a piece of paper and draw a big letter T on it. Then label the left column I don't want and the right hand column, I do want. First make a list of everything you don't want. Just use the letter you sent to me and write down stuff like, I don't want clients paying me late. I don't want cheap clients who can't afford to pay what I'm worth. I don't want child support payments to be late. Get all the negatives out of yourself and onto paper. Then go through each item and ask yourself, if I don't want this, what do I want? And write down what you do want in the right-hand column. When you've written a do want for each item on the left, fold the paper down the middle so you are looking at the do want list. Keep that list in front of you at all times. Start to imagine what it would feel like having clients who joyfully pay for your services. How wonderful it is when the child support checks arrive a day early. Work at keeping your focus on what you do want. If you start to think or talk about something on the don't want side, just say, I've dealt with that, and what I do want is. The T tool is the best law of attraction tool for getting clarity. And once you have clarity, what you want is on its way to you.